you know, there is some truth to the fact that like there is a reason that these particular people are in charge at this particular moment, or at least trying to be in charge at this particular moment. And how would you describe that reason? Um, so I wrote my first book um, about social movements in the U.S. since mm-hmm. the financial crisis. Um, and like the short reason is that I think that the financial crisis killed capitalist realism. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the wake of that, we still certainly haven't figured out what comes next. Mm-hmm. But people are at least being able, or at least, you know, capitalist now able to imagine. Capitalist viability. The, the idea that you can't imagine mm-hmm. anything sense. beyond the end of capitalism. Yeah. Um, so Mark Fisher's phrase, mm-hmm. capitalist realism. Mm-hmm. Um, because we had to sort of mm. imagine the end of capitalism because mm. it was it was trying to self-destruct, mm. um, which it does from time to time. But so I um, followed all of these different protest movements in the U.S. and tried to put them in one context rather than, you know, people wrote about like Black Lives Matter over mm. here and Occupy Wall Street over here and the Tea Party over there and mm. not trying, didn't try to understand them as like fundamentally a product of the political moment we're in when like, everything is falling apart and a lot of people feel very, very not served by mainstream politics at all. Yeah, and that continues, clearly. Um, So you have this weird election here, we have this weird election in the US where this, you know, 78 year old socialist um, Jewish guy from Brooklyn who talks with his hands as much as I do is, could potentially be the Democratic nominee for president to beat Donald Trump and yeah and over here you have Jeremy Corbyn versus Boris Johnson which is about as clear a contrast as as Bernie versus Trump 